I know recently, you know, we lost a great director and this was a, we did a podcast and it happened right after, um, but, you know, Richard Donner sadly passed away at the age of 91, great director. Uh, I don't know what you were thought, like your thoughts on Richard Donner, his movies, if you want to talk about that for a few minutes here. I've, I've always enjoyed him and like, even just recently watching that Lethal Weapon documentary, I was really just wow like how serious he takes things but not so serious but at the same time it's like he shows everyone that he cares for everyone and you know their well-being is always first on set mm -hmm. just beautiful beautiful works uh workmanship craftsmanship beautiful and he was always to me he's a he was one of the greats that was always consistent whether it be superman the movie or you know the, yeah fast forward to the goonies then leave the weapon then scrooged which came out later i mean a year later then leave the weapon 2 and he did some other movies then leave the weapon 3 and assassins which he directed leave the weapon 4. uh i know he also directed the omen he also directed the toy which I haven't seen. I haven't seen The, o the Omen or uh, The Toy, um, but I have seen 16 Blocks. Uh, that's a good <clears> one. And that was his last movie. And it's wow. sad because, yeah. Were we like really close to Lethal Weapon 5? Well, Apparently. well that, now that's not gonna happen. It's funny because you know, I was looking at, you know, like earlier today, you know, like movie webs are like, okay, you know, Lethal Weapon 5, Goonies 2, it's not going to happen. I'm like, you know, uh, but even then, I mean, I'm fine with not having either. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those things where, like, if it was him, I would say yes. But I don't want to see someone else do it for a cash grab on his passing. Yeah. Yeah. And... Like, Lethal Weapon works so well because you always have that team. Yeah. yeah. And Goonies work, you know, because you have that team. And, like, you can't... I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. And even, like, it, like towards the end there, he kept talking about... Like, Richard Donner was still on board with it. You know, that he wanted to make a fifth, a fifth Lethal Weapon. But I felt it was always... Uh, it was too late. I enjoyed the first four. You know, to me, I love the first one. The second one is on par. Mm -hmm. Lethal Weapon Three, I just rewatched today, and to me, that to me, that's a great sequel. It's underrated. Oh, it's a great. They're all great. Yeah, Lethal Weapon Four is fun. I mean, you could say maybe it's a little step down from the first three, but I still enjoy it. It's great, too, because, like, that formula that they use for those movies is insanely brilliant. And, like, watching your favorite people grow, it would have been so cool if they would have done Lethal Weapon 5. Yeah, like, what what kind of time frame, like, if, if you were to go back and, you know, if you were to end it on, I mean, a fifth film, yeah. could they have done that in the early 2000s or, you know, mid-2000s, yeah. maybe? Like, I think any time could have worked, you know? Like, they could have done it. They could have done another four movies. Yeah, I yeah, would have watched them. But I like the I, ending, I, too. And I was about to say, I like the ending to Lethal Weapon 4 because, to me, it kind of wrapped everything up full circle. Uh, a great song, you know, Why Can't We Be Friends? And, you know, it kind of... I thought it ended it well. But it's all... I mean, it's interesting to talk about that. That fucking froggy scene, man, that makes me cry every fucking time I see that movie. Yeah. Froggy? Oh, yeah, at the end there. Joe, Joe Pesci. Pesci? Yeah, Joe Pesci talking about his frog, his pet frog. <laughs> and I would say... Argumentally, I would say that's be Joe Pesci's best performance. But that's just, that's my favorite Joe Pesci performance. I would say the funniest was Lethal Weapon 3. We watching that again today. Mm -hmm. uh, he definitely made me laugh a lot in that movie. Okay, okay, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm oh, it's so good. I'm dying, Roger. I'm dying. Uh, I'm so not. Nice. You're on the ice. <laughs> Uh, but I would, yeah, definitely. I mean, Lethal Weapon Two, you had the debut of Leo Getz, and then Lethal Weapon Three, you know, he was uh, to me the funniest, and then Lethal Weapon Four, uh, yeah, like I said, I still enjoy, and the cast is still there. Uh, I still enjoy the chemistry uh, between Gibson and Glover and Pesci. There's a great mixture I find, like with all of them, like every, it's like the perfect storm every time, like. The violence is just right, the comedy is just right, the drama, like everything, the suspense, everything is like perfectly in tandem. Yeah. Such a great franchise. And I was just thinking too, because when you look at not just like The Weapon, but, you know, going back to Superman the movie and then yeah. The Goonies, Leave the Weapon, it seems like these are movies that people are still going to be talking about years, oh, more yeah. years to come. Yeah. We say it every time, like, the world will never see something like this again. You know? Yeah, Superman the movie, you know, really was sort of the launch pad. I mean, it really was the foundation for, you know, what comic book films, you know. Yeah. I mean, of course, a decade later with Batman coming along, and um, but it was really Superman the movie that really... Yeah. Watched it. And it was even groundbreaking at the time. Mm -hmm. Effects wise, you know. Those suits, those fucking Kryptonian suits, still I love the I love that look, like that silvery smashing pumpkins rocket suit kind of look. I love that look. <laughs> I yeah. love it. And it, it's funny because Gene Hackman, like this I read a story recently where he talked about he shared his memory, uh, like, working on Superman. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, there's a lot of people right now sharing their thoughts about Richard Donner. And Gene Hackman yeah, has been out of the game. Really Gene Hackman's been out of the game. He's been retired, living privately, but he was able to give a little interview. And I'll, if I could find that article, I'll put it down below in the uh, description. Uh, but, uh, so Gene Hackman talked about Richard Donner uh, very recently, and he's and, up and there. Ch and chunk, yeah, yeah, well, definitely Gene Hackman. Oh, uh, what were you gonna say? Um, what's uh, Chunk from uh, Goonies said that Richard Donner put him through college when he didn't have money. You know, that's like that's a great, it's a great thing. Like that, you didn't have to do that. Like. Well, speaking of well, talking about the Goonies, I mean, what's your thoughts on the Goonies? What do you feel about that movie? It was one like when I was younger, I never got it. I only got it later on in life. Like I, I got the chance to go catch a screening of it, and um, with my wife actually, and I was just like, man, it's such a great. It's so ahead of its time, you know. It's so ahead of like. Everything people try to do after that, you know, like Erie, Indiana, X Files, you know what I mean? Like that kind of. It, it had that kind of charisma to it, but at the same time, it's like. It's a great coming of age movie, and at the same time, it's a great hangout movie. It's a great friend movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great adventure piece. Um, I'm a. Yeah, I, lo I love Goonies. And I was kind of like. I was kind of hoping they would do a Goonies 2, you know? Someone, someone was saying to me the other day that they, what they should have done instead of this Indiana Jones movie was make a short round movie. Yeah. And I was thinking about him in in uh, Goonies. And I was like, damn. I like I I can only imagine like where the Goonies would be today. What would they be doing today? I think it's one of those things. No matter how hard they tried, it's just one of those sequels. I mean, it's been talked about so much over the years mm -hmm. that they could never get it right. And I don't, yeah. think, I don't think you can. A lot can. of people complain say like they, they waited too long, but I think it's more a, a case of getting everything right so that it's presented in the best possible way. I just think it just, it just didn't make it there yet. Like it wasn't ready yet. Or you, you know? maybe should like you should have made it a couple of years after the first movie. 
you know, around yeah. like 87, 88, you know, that would have been like a perfect time for that. Yeah. So, and I was looking at Richard Donner's filmography. That's what I was looking up real quick. I mean, just to mention the movies, The Omen, which I haven't seen, uh, The Toy, which I haven't seen, I've heard about. I which one? Which one was the? Is that the Robin Williams one? Uh, the, the, the Toy is with uh, Richard Pryor. Okay, I haven't seen Jack that. Jack Gleason. No. He also directed Lady Hawk. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, Lethal Weapon, Scrooged, Lethal Weapon Two. I Radio. didn't know that he did Scrooged. Mm -hmm. Or Assassins. That was a kind of never clicked to me that he did Assassins. And Radio Flyer, which I've never seen. Maverick. Wow. Radio. He did Radio Flyer. Yeah. I guess that's why it was so good. I still haven't seen that one. So good. Uh, he directed a uh, couple of episodes of Tales from the Crypt, Maverick, Mel Gibson, Western film, which I, I, I do have, uh, but I've never seen all the way through. Yeah, me either. And then getting to Assassins. What are your feelings about that one? I like Assassins. I love that fucking line when they're, when they're sitting in a, in a taxi cab. And Sly it flies like this, and he turns his head like that. And as soon as his eyes are off of Antonio for one second, Antonio fires a shot right into the fucking that plastic glass between them, that bulletproof mm -hmm. glass. Bam! And he goes, "You know, I had to try. Maybe you know, who knows? Wasn't maybe it wasn't made in America." <laughs> <laughs> they haven't seen that film in a while, but I would like to, you know, give it another watch. Yeah. I remember liking Sly and Antonio Banderas in the film. Uh, the pacing I wasn't sure about, but that's a yeah. One the pacing was, was a little too. It was like too. Um, that last hour was a little weird, but the first the first half of that movie holds up really, really, really well. It's just that like you go for that ride where things start slowing down. I don't know if they did that to make it more suspenseful or what, but I just kind of felt like it. Maybe you could have chopped fifteen minutes out of there. Yeah. Or replaced 15 minutes with something else. Yeah, I need to, I need to give that another watch. Um, but they also directed Conspiracy Theory, and that's a solid movie. That's a great movie. I saw that in the theater. Oh, you did? With my babysitter. She also took me to see Laka. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that would have been a cool double feature. Yeah. But I know it came out. But still, I mean... She almost took me to Batman 89, but she went with her boyfriend the night before. <laughs> so I didn't get to go see Batman 89 this year. But you got to see Lockup. I'll take it. <laughs> but, yeah, Conspiracy Theory, is a, that's a solid movie. Uh, for anybody, Mel Gibson, Julia Roberts. I wonder how that film would fly today. I mean, it's still, it's still a really entertaining movie. Um... I need to watch that again because I probably haven't seen that since then. Nice. I don't even remember that movie. I, I all I remember was I really liked it. Yeah, it makes me want to watch it again. But yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, I'll review that with you if you want to do that one. Yeah, that'd be a fun one to discuss. Uh, Lethal Weapon Four. He did right after. Yeah. Oh yeah. I saw one of those videos where they did like a. It was a VHS from the actual one of the nights where it played. The audience's first reaction to was it Jet Li? Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. There's a yeah. video out there like a audience reaction, and that was incredible. It's out there on YouTube for people. I think it's like someone had a camera in a theater when Lethal Weapon 4 came out, and you can hear the audience reactions to Jet Li. I think it's the scene. Which which uh, scene was it? When when um when they when they take down Murtaugh's house. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, how do you feel up, like, talking about that one, I know we talked about it earlier. Uh, compared to the first three, what are your feelings on the fourth movie? I love it. It's a weird one because, like, I saw it one time when I was young, and I liked it, but 
I was in a troublesome phase of my life, so I wasn't. I didn't really pay attention to it. But um, because it came out ninety eight. Yeah, and then I bought the I bought the box set for the movie, and that disc would never play. And I was always like, "Fuck!" Like, I just never ended up watching it until like I got the um, the collection version again, and I watched it again, and I was just like, "Damn, that's such a great movie!" Like, you really believe that? Like, there's no what do you, you call it? Like, suspense of disbelief or whatever. It's you, you're totally in. Like, you're just in there all the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to me, it's Everybody a is spot on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a solid sequel. And I like, you know, Jet Li is the villain. I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, the I shark. prefer... Oh, the shark in the, the beginning. Shark. And this fucking shark, can I say fuck? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> when he's like, this fucking oh, yeah, shark when he's in the police station, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Timeline, he also directed. I haven't seen Timeline. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Then 16 Blocks. I, I had that movie. I just don't remember if I watched it or if I didn't, but I know I had it at one point. But that's a good one. I saw that I when it came out. I think I still have it. Yeah, I saw it when it came out. Man, that's the last film we did. Wow. Uh, but, you know, I guess to cap off this short remembering video can, can here. I, can I throw in something else? Go ahead. Um... You mentioned that it was the last movie he did. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Could you imagine all of the passion and all of the want to get behind the camera again and all that, what what must have been festering inside, all that beautiful artistry? Could you imagine what that would have looked like in a Lethal Weapon 5? Yeah, I mean... it. Like all that pent-up... Wow. That charisma, all that waiting, all that time, because you know, you know, he must have thought about it every day. Yeah, and he talked about it until the end there, because I want to say the last thing, the last thing I saw him in was like the reunion thing that Josh Gannon was doing with the Goonies, and I think he appeared in there, and he was still in the sharp. Like again, he was even for up there in age, he was still uh, sharp. Uh, yeah. So, I know that, you know, he always wanted to do a fifth movie. And, I mean, why do you feel it never happened? Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that one? It's one of those, it's one of those great what-ifs. It's one of those great, you know, like we, we see that all the time, especially with, uh, with, um, with getting to work with Jack a lot. We get to see these great what-ifs. Like, mind-blowing, like... Unless you didn't see it for yourself, you would never believe that these things exist, right? I think we should do Lethal Weapon 5. I think we should call Jack up and be like, Jack, let's do Lethal Weapon 5. But, uh, but I mean, we'll talk, well, definitely I'll go to go into that uh, next time. Uh, there's some stuff to talk about there, but, you know, to sort of, you know, cap off this video here. Uh, what's your overall thoughts on uh, Richard Donner looking back? I'm just sad because we'll never see that again. That was special. That was like he did so much for so many little things. Like you know, like would DC be where it is today without Richard Donner? Would you know? What I mean, like would we even have comic book movies today without Richard Donner? Yeah. You know, like Lethal Weapon. That's a great move. Like. All of them, every single one of them were great. Like, some of the best family entertainment. You know, like, what I, love, what I loved about, like, Goonies, but, like, what I loved about him was, like, there was no, there was no kind of, like, things were amped up, like, you knew the stakes were high, but there was no, like, anybody could watch the movie. Like, there was no gap, there was no age gap. It felt like, it felt like, like a 12 year old kid could watch a Lethal Weapon movie, you know what I mean? Like, it felt tangible to everybody. And yeah. it's something you don't see with very many directors at all. Mm -hmm. So. And he always brought that consistency, and 
you know, from whether it be Superman the movie, the Goonies, Lethal Weapon, Scrooge, but the sequel was to Lethal Weapon. You know, to me, he's a great director that, you know, we'll never see again. Uh, there'll never be another Richard Donner. And even after Richard Donner's, you know, unfortunate passing, passing, you know, even for more years to come, people are still going to talk about Superman the movie, how impactful that was, the impact yeah. of the Goonies, the impact of Lethal Weapon, and the Buddy Cop franchise. It's weird too, like, he's like also responsible for like a lot of the Antonio Banderas movie. Um, it's... Like even some of the lesser talked about ones are still solid. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah. assassins. Yeah, I mean, I have. Okay, the pacing. Yeah, but it's still not bad. And then the conspiracy theory is a solid movie. I still have yet to see Maverick all the way, but and there's still some other ones that I still have to watch, whether it be the yeah. Omen, the Toy. He really knew how to make Mel Gibson shine. I'll say that. Yeah. He really brought out all of that household name of Mel Gibson, he really brought that out. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point there, because, I mean, how many times did we did it work with Mel Gibson? Six times. Yeah. The Four yeah. Lethal Weapons, Maverick, Conspiracy Theory, you know, and you wonder what other actors he could have worked with. Oh, yeah. I mean, he worked with the Stallone, you know, what if he worked with, you know, an Arnold, or, okay, you know, Dan. Yeah, Kurt Russell, Throwing mm -hmm. those names out there, especially during that mid '90s time, you think about. And he also made a point earlier about after 16 blocks. You know, he didn't really direct anything. I mean, he kind of he stopped after that. You know, yeah. what more could we have gotten? One more film, at, you know, from Richard Donner. I'm wondering if that on the Lethal Weapon, uh, the new box set. My wife actually got it for me for I think for our anniversary and. Or for something, and uh, there's a documentary on there. It's fabulous, like fab, absolutely fabulous, like jaw dropping fabulous. I wonder if he directed that. I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. We'll never see another, you know, director like that again. And um, great humanitarian philanthropy. I don't want to say philanthropist. I don't know if I can say philanthropist, but he helped out a lot of people who were in a lot of rough spots. Exactly, and he definitely. Uh, and you could tell he loved what he was doing, because you could tell it. You, it shows on film that he loved and he cared about everything he put his name on. And that, that to me, that's. That's his legacy. I mean, he was always proud of whatever he was doing. And I think every, directors now should take not just a note or page, but the whole book from Richard Donner. Yep. He made us believe we could fly. So. And man, just like, enjoy that final flight, baby. A toast to Richard Donner. To Richard Donner. Rest in peace. Uh, so. Uh, but that's it for now. Uh, I'll wrap this up here. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Donner. Thoughts and uh, go out to the family and friends. Uh, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you later. Later. First off, I, I just wanted to uh, pay my condolences to the late, great uh, Richard Donner, who just passed away. I mean, this guy, he did it all. And... Uh, you get Superman, the Goonies, uh, the Omen, and uh, the Lethal Weapon films. So it would, it, 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 and first off, superhero movies, especially Marvel, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Superman. Despite the fact that it's DC, and people don't realize that people that's goes to say people need to learn their history. This this Richard Don, it, none none of the Marvel movies wouldn't work today if it wasn't for Super, Superman the movie and Richard Donner. Richard Donner brought it to life. He made you believe a man can fly. And since then, we we fall. We a lot of filmmakers have fall behind it with the Marvel films. And I think Marvel needs needs to take note from what he did because he made he gave Superman justice. He tried to sway away from making Superman a joke because back then Superman was already becoming a joke. But Richard Donner brought him back to its full glory. And I think Marvel should take note for from that for for sure. And 
Superman the movie is a personal personal uh, one of mine. It's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to get into movies. And so Richard Donner is the reason, is the main reason why I want to get into movies more. And of course The Goonies, which was another another personal uh, one of mine. So it, it's, I had a lot of cool fantasies. Of, uh, I had a, little, a lot of great childhood fantasies of that when I was a child. And uh, Richard Donner may rest in peace. And... Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Richard Don may rest in peace, and um, he made you believe a man can fly, and we can all fly. <laughs> <laughs>